Herzl didn't invent Zionism from nothing, but rather he simply changed the strategy. According to Herzl, the yearning for a national homeland would come to fruition through political activity. But the early days of political Zionism were not exactly a success story. The Turkish Sultan Abdul Hamid rejected all of Herzl's proposals to sell the land of Israel to the Jews. Also, the famous initiative of Herzl to gain the support of the German Kaiser, an ally of Turkey, led to a dead end. Reluctantly, Herzl turned to England. England, the big England, the free England, the England that controls all of the seas, she will understand us and our goals. Thus spoke Herzl at the Fourth Zionist Congress that convened in London in 1900. And sure enough, the idea of the rebirth of Israel was in fashion in England in those days. Religious and political leaders saw, even before Herzl, great merit in England's ability to fulfill the prophecies of the Bible. The political contacts with England started in the beginning of the reign of King Edward VII. But with all of the goodwill of England, the Majesty's Kingdom wasn't able to return the land of Israel to the Jews for the simple reason that this land wasn't in their possession. Colonial Secretary Joseph Chamberlain held negotiations with Herzl about settling Jews in Cyprus or Sinai. The Zionist movement was interested in these places because of their proximity to the land of Israel. Seen here is an unusual film showing Chamberlain and his journey to the African continent in 1902. One of the results of Chamberlain's journey to Africa would prove to be the biggest test for the Zionist movement. Shortly after Chamberlain's return from Africa, in March 1903, he summoned Herzl to a special meeting in which he said, As part of my journey, I saw a land that's perfect for you. The land is Uganda. The coastal region is extremely hot, but inland, the climate is very comfortable even for Europeans. You can grow cotton and sugar there. When I saw Uganda, I said to myself, this is the land for Dr. Herzl. But Herzl rejected Chamberlain's offer. Unlike Cyprus and Sinai, Uganda was too far, and it was hard to see it as a springboard for the land of Israel. <laughs> it wouldn't have been, you know, it wouldn't have been. And no, it's, it's, an, it's, an, it's, an, it's an African enclave, it's a Bantu country. No, no, no. No, it wouldn't, wouldn't do, it wouldn't do. You know, it hadn't got the spark of divinity in it. Do you understand what I mean? It hadn't got the essence of our recreation, of our return to Zion. 